what up what up welcome back to the channel i'm Odi J and we are locked in this is episode six a true story starring kevin hart on netflix now we seen gene get a new rolex well it's a used rolex from ari that was gifted to him by carlton because carlton doesn't want to take the friend role and potentially still let this video get leaked out following what kid has planned so we need to see what's about to happen to gene before we get into this episode shout out to the notification gang if you're new to the channel you want to be a part of it hit the subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you get something every time i upload hit that like button it's the easiest thing you can do now we've seen carlton make the call savez nico i think i found who you're looking for and one thing we know about these two brothers they don't play when it comes about their brother ari and this could get real ugly for Gene, so let's jump into it. This is episode six, true story. We know Carlton made that call to Saivas and Nikos. I think I got your guy. And that's why he gave him that Rolex. So when they go in there and they see their brother's Rolex on them, they could do what they're doing. You hear him in the background, bah, bah, you just hear him screaming. Now they're at this motel and of course, anyone staying at this motel they either don't have money or they don't want no problems. So them hearing them getting whooped on no one's going to come out and save them but carlton's just sitting out front because he doesn't want no parts of it they ain't here whooping on our man gene i'm talking about bing 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 there's no getting back from this just when they get done with him he says ari was your fat brother he begged for mercy and this is where he took it a little too far he could have just took this whooping they would have got up out of there because he doesn't have any information but when you start talking tough like hey you didn't already took an l just keep that and live to fight another day the two brothers they ain't playing they start stomping them out see they were gonna let them live but now at this point the disrespect is just too much and they put a beating on him worse than what they already did carlton finally comes in the room to see what's actually going on and gene he's laid out he ain't make it they got rid of him and he's asking did he say anything in it they're pretty much saying, yeah, he confessed to killing our brother Ari because he said that Ari begged for mercy. So that was his way of saying, hey, before we got rid of him, he begged for mercy. Now, Gene was just covering the foot tracks and everything that kid did trying to protect his celebrity friend. So Carlton, he's like, whew. And you hear Saivez say, thank you for helping us find who killed our brother. Before they leave, you see Carlton, he sneaks over to the counter and what he's doing is he's grabbing Gene's cell phone because if they seen that, Gene was online, you know what I'm saying, close to guess who, kid, it's gonna look very, very bad because now it's Carlton, that's your brother, your brother knew this guy? And they're asking him outside, how did you know who he was? So he's just trying to separate him and his brother away from Gene. And when they get outside, Nikos is asking him, how did you, you know what I'm saying? How did you find out about this guy? And Carlton trying to play a coup. Let's get away. You know what I'm saying? We just killed somebody. Let's get about the spot. The block is hot. Savez tells Carlton, look, tonight you proved your loyalty to us. And that's good. And he's like, yeah, you know, Ari was a friend of mine. And well, now we paid that debt off. Ari's gone. The person that they think killed Ari is gone also. He takes Gene's cell phone and he tosses it in the water because we don't need any evidence. We don't need no one finding his phone and going through it or none of that. We know Kid's been having a divorce going on with his girl, Mo. And he's talking to her like, hey, you don't disrespect me and let the guy you're dating, who's supposed to be a football player going into the Hall of Fame, make jokes about me in front of my son. That's just very disrespectful. Whoever the stepfather is, he's supposed to come in I won't say he's that father figure, but he's playing a father role, a man that's in the life. And he's just supposed to guide this kid. Kid is still in his life and he's telling his ex, hey, don't do not do that. That's disrespecting me. And you got to think about it like this. Kid is paying for everything. Says she was in what, a $7 million or $14 million house. All of this is being paid for by him. And you letting some dude that you just talking to talk reckless? Nah. Now she's sticking up for her new boo. He made a mistake. That's it. Yeah, well, if he made a mistake, move out of my house and go move in with him and y'all fix that mistake. And uh, let me get my son back. They don't ever want to do that. They want to keep everything that you worked for for themselves and then stick up for the new guy. That's probably disrespecting kid inside a kid's house. Hmm. Oh, man. You see it all the time. 
Carlton goes home, passes out on his couch, and when he wakes up, he sees his brother's commercials on TV. Him selling some <laughs> some mattresses, he jumping on them, playing around. Oh man, these are the best mattresses ever. And he's just looking at it like, if only they knew what me and my brother were into. But you also seen this when the cops were asking him to take a picture. He doesn't want to just be considered, oh, that's just kid's brother. No one knows Carlton's name. It's just, oh, that's just kid's brother. Now, first movie, Crossing a Billion. We got to put out a sequel. Normally sequels are going to be trash, but you got to ride that wave. And they're trying to tell him, hey, look, kid, we're going to need you to start off recording in January because your co-star, that's when he's free in January. And we want this movie out by next summer. The only thing is kid wants to be there for his son, Christian, because he's going through a divorce. And, you know, kids, especially younger kids, when they're experiencing their parents being separated and going their different ways, it's hard on them. So what kid wants to do is spend time for his son. And he's telling him, look, I don't care what y'all got going on. I'm telling you what I have going on in my personal life. So January might not be able to happen. Kids over here frustrated. Tell the director, the producer, whoever you need to talk to that January isn't going to work for me. I'm telling y'all that's what's going to happen. Now he gets a knock on his door and it's the manager of the hotel. But he also shows up with some detectives and they want to talk to him about the murder of Gene. Now, kid doesn't know what happened because the last thing he know is I left his house. The video was deleted. What the hell could have happened to Gene? They're headed down to the police station and they're trying to get, you know, what kind of story is going on here. Now, we know Gene was just hanging out with kid last night, taking pictures, doing everything. You hear Herschel up front. We dropped him off. He was alive and kid was with me. So he has an alibi because he has a trusted security guard that is going to be able to vouch for him like he was with me. So Todd, he's texting, you know, you got to use your network. He's texting TMZ to try to get ahead of the story and see if they have any information. And when you have connections like this, they'll be like, hey, we're going to run this story in like two hours. So if there's anything you need to do, you need to get it done. But at this point, kid, he's wondering what the hell happened. And he's texting Carlton. Gene was killed. Stay off the phones. They bring kid in for questioning and they're telling them that. He was brutally murdered in his hotel room and kid he's he's wondering what what the hell happened because he he doesn't even know what's going on so he's trying to figure out what's going on and they're just saying he was you know saying whooped on in there they took a few things but that's all we have right now so kid he's nervous he's like whoa are, are y'all ruling me out i mean i'll cooperate whatever y'all need and they make a joke and say well you know, we never ruled you in. And they start talking about how short he is. Like someone bigger had to do this work. <laughs> Kid, you, you wouldn't have been able to put a hurting on him like this. So at least at this point, <laughs> we know that kid is good in this situation. Cops normally wouldn't do this. And they have all kinds of evidence in here. Like everything that came from Gene's room. They wouldn't just have it on a desk, especially in front of someone they're questioning. Before he leaves... These detectives, I'm telling you, they terrible detectives. <laughs> they made a joke about his height and stuff. Now, I told you there was a lot, a lot of evidence from Gene's room there. Before he leaves, they grab one of the posters that Gene has. And it's like, hey, uh, could, could, you, could you sign this and make it out to our precinct? They just took some of Gene's stuff and was like, hey, sign this for us. <laughs> Come on, man. After they leave the precinct, he wants to go talk to his brother Carlton because we got to figure out what's going on. Now, we know Carlton has this restaurant that hasn't been doing good. It's been going under, and that's the reason why they were getting the $600,000 originally for Carlton to start running this. But he tells them, hey, we're going to be here for a while because he wants to talk to his brother about this murder. Kid is telling them everything that he went through. I was at the house. The cops came. I went down there, had it. Hey, I don't know what's going on, but you need to explain to me, Carlton, what's going on. And Carlton just tells him, Nico's and Savez, they got stuff on us. Hell, Gene has stuff on us. This was the best decision because all, all the leads that are coming back to them, they're getting cut off slowly but surely. Now, kid, he didn't want anything to happen to Gene. Gene was an all right guy. He got the video deleted, so there was no reason for him to have to die. Carlton is just using his streets and trying to run things that way and it's really mess <laughs> messing things up kid just comes to the realization maybe it is over because that's what carlton's telling them everything that's connected to us is pretty much cut off at this point we should be good you know what i'm saying we we got all the loose ends out the way 
So kid goes over, grabs some Hennessy. We about to take a couple of shots because I mean, this isn't the ideal situation. At least we're better than we were 24 hours ago. Hopefully, as I was saying, this is an ideal situation. You just got to make the best of what you got. So kid says, after I get done with this Eastern leg of the tour, let's try to get this restaurant back together, you know, get it up and running. We got to put all that behind us and we just got to move forward to make it a better situation for us. These two, they just start drinking. Hey, let's enjoy it. Let's make the best of it. And of course, they go back to Carlton's house. They really not trying to be at that hotel. We didn't got two bodies in there. Yeah. And we know that those brothers are looking for us and they've been snooping around the four seasons. We just gonna go back to the house. We gonna chill. You can have a bed, man. We good, man. We got toe up. Now they get back to Carlton's spot and the phone starts to go off. Kid gets up and he picks it up. And what does he do? He leans over his brother and unlocks it with the facial recognition. When he goes in the phone, he sees a girl by the name of Simone. For you, I'll see what I can do. I got a warm place in my bed for you, girl. And we're looking at it. This girl looks eerily familiar. Kind of like the girl Daphne. Now, kid is kind of interested and intrigued in who this really is because she looks familiar we scroll down to the bottom of the messages i'm like yeah she do look good carlton agrees he left five fire emojis and the last message is yeah i know you like it but will kid like it so we're starting to look at this as what's really going on here oh no at this point we need to know who this simone lady is and why is my name and you guys' text messages well kid calls simone and as soon as she answers, she says, I know you say wait till your brother leaves, but that means you can't check in. So she looks like the girl Daphne and she's talking about waiting until kid leaves and he's not checking in. Something ain't adding up. There you go. Episode six, a true story. Let me know what you think when they called you in to talk to the police because they told you that Gene was dead. I personally don't think I would have showed up to the police station without a lawyer, especially because I was seen all on social media with him the night before. And also, who do you think this Simone lady is and why is she so close to Carlton checking on what kid is doing? Let me know what you think. I'm J. If you like the content on the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.